Hey everybody, we're back with another Marvelous Designer video and we're actually going to carry on from where we left off. So if you didn't already watch these previous videos where we created this jeans and this t-shirt, then be sure to go back and watch that because we go over all the basic controls of the program. This time we're going to do something a little bit more advanced. If you already have a character, feel free to use that, but if you don't have a character, we actually have this free mannequin up on rendercrate.com. It's actually the same underlying body as all the other outfits we've been uploading recently. It just doesn't have any clothes and it doesn't have any textures, but you can use it to follow along and create your own outfits. And if you decide to upgrade to the pro account in the future, you'll be able to download all the textures. It comes with multiple skin tones. It comes with a bunch of different outfits and you can mix and match those with whatever we're going to create today. So let's jump into the program. Okay, so here we are in Marvelous Designer, right where we left off. We had a basic t-shirt and jeans. So I want to show you guys how to make something a little more advanced than this, like I promised. I think we're going to make a jacket for this guy, and we're going to do something kind of crazy. We're going to make a puffy jacket with kind of a quilted look. Now, instead of starting from scratch, I'm actually just going to duplicate the t-shirt and sort of cannibalize it and change it into something else. Control C for copy and Control V for paste and drop it over here. We'll fix that in a second, but let's select the original t-shirt and then right click and freeze. Okay. Now just so we don't get confused, you can see I've already changed the colors of the t-shirt and the jeans. I'm going to do the same thing for this new jacket, and here's how you do that. Over here on the right, you can see I've got some fabric or some materials. You can go ahead and click add to create a new one, and you can name these if you want. I'll call this jacket fabric, and you can choose whatever color you want right here. Maybe I'll go with a purple, and then you select the garment and click this little button here on the right of the fabric and it will apply that fabric to the selected garment. Now just a quick note while we're here, you can change a few other things about it. You can adjust the roughness or the shininess of it. You can make it metallic if you want to, whatever you want. Down here at the bottom under physical property, there's actually some simulation presets where you can choose the way it behaves. We're not going to really mess with that too much in this video, but just know that you can make it behave and move like denim or leather or faux fur or whatever you want. Okay, I'm going to move this back over to his torso and we're going to make a bigger jacket. So first thing I'm going to do is scale this up so it's bigger. I'm going to press simulate to let it relax. And we can see it's actually kind of stuck inside of the original t-shirt. So here's another tip to help you deal with that. I'm going to press undo. And if I have my garment selected, notice over here on the right, we have an option called layer. By default, everything is on layer zero, but if you set it to higher number, Marvelous Designer will know that you want it to be on the outside of things with a lower number. So I currently have my jeans set to layer one. My t-shirt is set to layer two. So for the jacket, I'm gonna set it to layer three and press play. And now you can see it doesn't get tangled up as much on the deeper garment. Okay, so now we basically have a long t-shirt. Let's change the silhouette of this thing so it resembles more of a jacket. So let's extend the length of the sleeves. Remember in that first video when we were extending the jeans, I mentioned you don't really want to extend it all the way in one go because it starts to freak out. So go a little bit at a time and then let it simulate and adjust it to make sure it's landing where it's supposed to. Okay, now I'm going to taper the sleeves. All right, perfect. Let's give it a collar now. So I'm going to go up to create a new rectangle and I'll just draw one out like this and then we'll duplicate it, control D to duplicate and mirror so they're connected. So this is gonna start on the back and sort of wrap around to the front. So I'm going to actually flip this around, same thing with this one, flip it around. So those are gonna connect and these edges connect to the top of the neck opening. Okay, let's sew this center line together like that. And you can see we have one long edge here, but we're going to sew it to two different edges, so we can't really use the basic segment sewing. We need to use free sewing. The hotkey is M. So I'm going to start here in the center of the back panel and click from the center edge out to here. And then I'll start here. And you can see that it actually puts a little dot for you so you know how far to sew. Then I'll click on this, sew the rest of the length, and then hopefully this lines up pretty close. There we go. Uh, I just press play and you can see it's kind of freaking out. The reason for that is I forgot to set the layers for these new collar pieces. So let's undo and I'll click on these new pieces and I'll set these also to be layer three so they stay on the outside of that undershirt. And there we go. You can see there's a little bit too much fabric in it. It's kind of bunching up at the top. So we can actually shorten this top edge. I'm not too concerned with the fit yet. I'm just trying to get all the pieces in place. Okay, so we have all the parts we need. We've got the torso, 
we've got long sleeves, and we've got a collar. And now it's time to adjust them to make them look a little bit more like one of those puffy jackets. So the first thing is, I think puffy jackets should be a little bit shorter and then have a cinched up uh, sort of tighter waist at the bottom. So I'm going to shorten this even more. And I'm also going to grab these outer corners and give it a little bit more breathing room so it's more baggy. Now I'm going to create a smaller waistband so it actually bunches up. So let's go create a rectangle. So I'll start here and I'll draw a new rectangle. This is again the bottom edge of the jacket, but I'm not going to make it as long as the current piece because I want it to actually bunch up when I sew it together. I want it to be a little bit tighter. Okay, let's duplicate this piece. And they're kind of flying off into space, so let's bring those back together. Now I'm going to copy paste, control C, control V. This is for the back panels. And now I'll hit control D to duplicate, so we maintain symmetry. And then position them at the back where we want them to go. And let's sew it up. So I'm going to use segment sewing, the hot key is N. And I'll sew this together. And then we'll sew this upwards to the panel that already exists. Let's press play. Oops. Looks like I forgot to set my layers again, so let's undo. I always do that. We grab those new pieces of fabric and I'll set it to layer three. Cool, so we can see we've got kind of a tighter, what looks like maybe a, an elastic waistband, and then a baggier midsection. And it's starting to actually take shape and look like a really cool, interesting garment. Now I'm actually gonna open up his jacket here in the front so it looks like maybe it's zipped only halfway up. So let's go to edit sewing, the hotkey is B. And I'll select this edge, which is sewing up the center of the jacket here, and I'll delete it. And if we press play, the front should open. I think I want to zip it up to about here, though. So let's undo. And I'm going to use free sewing to just kind of sew it halfway and stop. So free sewing, the hotkey is M. I'll sew it to about there. Let's go on this side. And notice it gives you a little dot so you know how far to go. Okay, and I'm just going to adjust my collar a little bit here to make it fit a little bit better. I checked the pattern online and I just wanted to give it a slight curve. Alright, one last step before we do the puffy effect. I'm going to have the sleeves end in a similar way to the bottom of the hem of the jacket. Starting to take shape. It still looks a little bit too loose for the material. See how the collar is collapsing? So let's actually change the fabric type to see if we can make it look a little bit stiffer. I know we said we weren't gonna dive into this in this video, but it looks like it's gonna be necessary. So I'll click on my jacket fabric right here, and then I'll go down to the presets at the bottom underneath physical property, and let's try something that seems sturdier. Don't worry about picking the exact right one, just pick something that seems like it would be stiffer, like maybe denim. And we can see the jacket looks a little bit stiffer now and the collar stands up. We can always change this later, so it's not a permanent choice. Okay, so now that we've got a sort of suede, members-only dad jacket, we can make some adjustments to make it look like the puffy jacket we're trying to create. So far, I haven't really taught you guys anything new yet in this video. We're using the same techniques we used to make the t-shirt, but now we're gonna switch gears and I'm gonna show you guys a really cool trick that you can use on all kinds of garments in Marvelous Designer. So we're gonna create that puffy quilted effect and the way you do it in Marvelous Designer is just the way you would do it in real life. The way quilted fabrics work is there's two layers to it and then you put some sort of stuffing in between it like cotton and then you sew a pattern through the material to make little cells or squares or diamonds or whatever shape you want. So we're actually gonna do just that. We'll start by sort of outlining the panels of the jacket. And my favorite way to do that is to actually right click on say this edge here. This is the one that goes right down the middle. And I'm gonna say offset as internal line. And if we look really close, we can see that it's actually duplicated the edge inward about a half a centimeter. Let's make this two whole centimeters. And it's kind of hard to see. We can change the color of the fabric in a second, but notice that it duplicated this line inward. I'm gonna press okay, there we go. Okay, so now we have this internal line. I'm going to do the same thing up the side edge here. Right click, offset as internal line. Let's do one centimeter on this one. And there it is. And now we can actually create internal lines to create a pattern. So just Google an image of a puffy jacket and pick whichever pattern looks best to you. I think I'm going to do one where from here up, the pattern is broken up into vertical stripes. And then from here down, it's going to be horizontal stripes. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the internal polygon tool, the hotkey is G, and I'm gonna choose my separation right about here. You can do this anywhere you want. So to create a cut, I'm going to start here on my internal seam, and then I'll click here on this outer edge, 
and notice that it wants to keep drawing. It's actually trying to make a closed shape, but if you don't want to make a closed shape, you just want a line. Just click one more time on that second point and it'll finalize and create a line for you. Now I want this to repeat on the lower half of the jacket. So I'll click on that and then I'll right click and I'll go offset as internal line. Now we notice that it's going upward. I want it to go downward. So I'm going to click reverse direction and I want a few copies of this. So where it says number of offsets, I'm going to increase the number. Now I don't want them to be this tight, so we can also increase the distance between them. Let's do three centimeters. That looks pretty good. Let's just increase the number of them until we get to the bottom of the jacket. That looks pretty good like that. So now we have these horizontal stripes. While these are selected, if we want these to go all the way to the edge of the jacket, we can right click and go extend or trim to internal line. And then these ones here, they didn't extend because there is no internal line that they're pointing at. So we have to actually click on these points and right click and go extend to pattern outline. And you'll see it actually jumps to the pattern outline. Looking good. Let's add some vertical lines here on the shoulder. And let's try diagonal maybe. I think that looks pretty cool. So let's duplicate this one. Right click, offset as internal line. And we obviously don't need that many cuts so let's lower the number of them. Press OK. Looks like it got a little confused here so we can actually just click this and bring it up. And then we can right click and I can choose extend or trim to internal line. Okay, let's duplicate it upward as well. Perfect. Okay, we've got that going. Let's do it on the back. I'm just gonna repeat that entire process again on the back. All right, and there we go. I guess we could do the same thing to the sleeve really quick by grabbing this edge here, offset as internal line and repeat it all the way up. And then once again, right click and go extend or trim to pattern outline. Let's press play and see how it falls. All right, so far we have the same jacket, but just with some cuts in it, just some pre-made uh, little seams or sewing lines. To create the quilted effect, we actually need to duplicate the entire jacket and then bear with me, this is gonna sound tedious, but we need to sew every edge to the copy of itself. And this sounds tedious because it is tedious, <laughs> but it's definitely worth it. So here we go. I'm going to select the entire jacket and I'm going to hit control C for copy, control V for paste and move it up here. And while we have the jacket selected, this is a new layer, which is going to go on the outside of the original layer. So I'll set this to layer four. So we hopefully don't have any trouble with it tangling up. And we can also sort of break it apart and line it up with where it goes. Looks like a stringy mess right now, but that's okay. Okay, definitely don't press play yet. You're gonna have some trouble if you do. I'm actually going to select the original jacket and then we'll right click and we'll freeze it. So we're only working on the new outer layer of the jacket. So here's where the tedious part comes in. You can see I have a copy of the jacket above the original one. I'm gonna zoom in and every edge on this jacket, I'm gonna sew to the copy of it on this jacket down here. So I'll click segment sewing, N, and I'll first start by sewing the silhouette to its corresponding edges on both patterns. If you get this warning that says overlapping sewing line, that just means it's already sewn. Just press OK and move on. Now this is a very time consuming process. It's not very difficult, but it's time consuming and you might zone out while you're doing it and sew the wrong edges together. So pay very close attention to what you're sewing. So now I'm sewing all of the internal lines to their corresponding internal lines on both patterns. Now the good news is because we have symmetry on, we only have to do one half of the model. Okay, looks a little bit crazy here, but as long as we sewed it correctly and we have the layers set up properly, it should come together pretty well. So I'm just gonna take a quick cursory glance around the model. It's kind of impossible to visually check every single seam just cause there's a hundred of them now. But if anything just jumps out at you as being very wrong, like lines obviously crossing from this side of the body over to the other side of the body, just make sure you go and check your sewing before you press play. But if you just kind of really quickly take a quick glance and see that everything looks like it's pointing to where it should go, then you're probably okay to try simulating. So moment of truth, let's press play. And we can see it comes together pretty well. I didn't get any tangliness. Now I'm going to actually select the under layer of the jacket and unfreeze it. Let's right click and I'm going to click on unfreeze and we'll press play. 
Now, sometimes when you have multiple layers in the armpits, it can start to freak out. Just try to let it settle down. A lot of times it just needs to work itself out. You don't need to mess with it too much. Sometimes you may need to sort of gently pull them apart so they don't get tangled. Okay, so now it actually feels a little bit puffier, but here's where the magic happens. We actually need to change the size of these two layers. If you remember way back in the first video when I talked about sewing two different edges together that are different lengths, you'll start to get that bunched up, folded, wrinkly effect. We can actually take advantage of that by selecting the outer layer and slightly making it bigger. So now every single edge is a different length than the edge it's sewn to and you'll start to get a more bunched up effect. We're also at the point now where this stiff fabric, this denim fabric that we chose is probably not doing us any favors. So I'm gonna switch back to a looser fabric. I'm gonna click on my green jacket fabric and we'll choose something that seems less stiff like, I don't know, I'm just gonna choose one of these random cotton ones and it should start to bunch up a little bit. Getting a little bit of tangliness in the armpit but if you just relax and let it work itself out, it usually does a pretty good job. Okay, let's keep adjusting the size of this outer layer. I'm gonna keep expanding it very small increments, larger and larger. Now the last step that's key to making it look like a nice puffy jacket with a lot of detail is to actually give the mesh more detail. Now here's something we haven't talked about yet. If we look at the wireframe of our model, we can see it's not very dense. You can see the triangles, the vertices, there's not very many of them. So we need to increase the vertex count of our jacket. Now the way we increase the polygon count, it's a little bit different than the way other 3D programs sort of approach it. In other programs, you think about adding or smoothing or subdividing. So in Marvelous Designer, it's called particle distance. And the way you want to think about it is by decreasing the distance between the vertices, but maintaining the same size of the jacket, it forces it to create more vertices so they can be close together. So if I select all of my jacket patterns, and I go to particle distance millimeters, what it's saying is the average distance of all the vertices is about 20 millimeters. But if we say make it 10 millimeters, it's not gonna actually make the jacket smaller, it's just gonna add twice as many vertices so that they are 10 millimeters apart. So I'm gonna press simulate to let it relax into its new shape. We should get some more detail in the jacket. It's gonna run a lot slower, but we start to see a little bit of that folded detailed look. I'm actually going to lower my particle distance one more step down to maybe five millimeters. Be careful with this. Um, if your computer's not very fast, it could actually slow down or freeze. You can see it's running a lot slower now. But you can also see we're starting to get that really nice quilted, padded, sort of folded look. So this is actually a really great technique for creating anything that's supposed to be padded or quilted. I use it a lot for medieval knights and their padded under armor. It's good for leather jackets with big thick panels on them. And it's also good for things that are not clothing, like maybe a comforter for a bed or, or couch cushions, things like that. If you have any ideas for things you'd like to learn how to create in Marvelous Designer, be sure to leave a comment. And also be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're aware when the next tutorial comes out. I think I'm going to show you guys how to simulate these garments on an animated character next. And don't forget that the mannequin I've been using is free for anybody on Production Crate. And if you upgrade to Pro, you can download these casual outfits that we've already uploaded and add this puffy jacket to the collection. If you make any cool outfits with this mannequin, be sure to tag us on Instagram with it or post it to our Discord. All right, later creators.